Yo, it's your boy Kenji Man, and I'm back with another video. This is my top seven strategies. Uh, top seven strategies video. I've been waiting for y'all to do the votes for replacing Roboku. Um, like I said, man, Roboku has used poison just a little bit too much. He's he's done he's done done stuff unfitting of one of the heavenly greats in Zao. And this is a something I really have to point out. If you at that position and you are respected to that level, you know, I get it. If you were like a a side general who's doing that, I'd be like, all right, that's just that side general over there. You know what I'm saying? We ain't gonna put him we ain't gonna have him running the army. Roboku runs the army, y'all. Imagine if Shohiken was out here poisoning everybody. <laughs> y'all wouldn't like that. But, um, yeah, I got him off that top seven, man. Uh, Not to say that Moulton's going to be at the spot that he was. I put Roboku at number three. Because I do think he's a great general. He's a very smart person. He knows how to control the army. It's just, like I said, he got the worst luck ever. And the worst luck, then that luck comes from him doing whole ass shit. You know what I'm saying? You can't, you can't, you can't kill one of the greatest generals of all China, Oki, by shooting him in the back. And think you, you gonna have some good luck after that. Nah. Nah. But number seven, y'all, I'm placing moats in there. And this is the one that y'all voted for. Molten got 46% of the votes of me replacing Roboku. And I get it, y'all. And I understand exactly what you're talking about. Molten is not one of those people that I see as a great fighter or a good sword fighter. I know Har tries to make it seem like that. But he's more of like a uh, he's more of like a dagger with a rope at the end. You know what I'm saying? You can, but you got to bring it back. You can't You can't have him standing out there one-on-one -on -one with him in the duel for too long. Or he's going to get knocked off his horse. He got. He's the type of guy that flies around the enemy and causes confusion through strategical maneuvers. And this is why I think he's going to be a great strategist. He was a, a student of Shohiken at his school, and he was the number one student at that strategical school that Kerry Ten and Moki went to. So we have to give our hats off to him. He did um he came up with the plan at Sanyo campaign to take out the elite members of Rinko's army so Ohan and um Shen could uh, attack Rinko. He also you know saved his father during the coalition war. You know, he read Car Karin's move. He he read it. And we seen him during um, uh, Shukai Plains when he was able to hold off. Uh, damn, what's that boy name? He's the Lord of Rion. Uh, I forgot that dude. That dude that uh, Kanki tricked and made him go back to his uh, his city to protect it. I don't remember his name because he ain't worth shit. I ain't seen him in a long time. Where he at? I don't know. Don't care. Um, that's why I think Molten deserves this. And as we get, and if you know, like I know Molten, you know how strategical he can be in the future. He is the reason why the mountain people never got to really come into China during a uh, king size reign. He defended it. So, and he helped build the walls of China. I mean, <laughs> you, yeah. That big thing that we can see from space, Moten has something to do with it. Yeah, the builder. But I get it. But he's because he's still young and he hasn't done all that, I'm going to throw him at number seven. But we know how good he is. Number six. <clears throat> I don't like this guy. I don't like his dad. <laughs> I hope his dad is burning in hell. But, um, go home, man. Yeah, man. 
We seen Go Home May take a couple of L's in the beginning of the series because he wanted to join Boku in his, you know, coalition war. And we also seen him take a L when he was using a great fire dragons away against To Oan and Shin. And didn't realize that those young guys were going to uh, step step up. You know, they stepped up. And what I think he learned from that whole little encounter there was that his communications, his communications team needs to be faster. Because Ohan and Shin was just busting through uh, through some of your, um, through your uh, guard. And you didn't even know they was on top of you. How? Man, you need to have message birds, all type of shit. I have multiple messengers, rats, dogs, horses, birds, pigeons. Use all of them, dog. Communications need to be as fast as lightning. Or you're going to get caught up in a situation like that where just a, 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 a few people can sit by all your men. They outnumber them and come get you. It's like Assassin's Creed, bruh. Get it together, go home, man. But um, he has gotten better. When we teamed up with him and did a truce and went to attack Chu and took that capital, I mean that, that uh, castle from Janu or Manu, Manu. And I seen his men. And he came, I came to the agreement. You could be a great strategist. You could be the greatest of strategists. But if you don't have uh, the pieces needed to be a, what I'm really trying to say is, a strategist is, is only good as his pieces on the board. If you don't have those pieces on the board and you lack in something, it's like a quarterback who don't have a good wide receiver, who don't have a good running back, who don't have a good tight end. Yeah, he could get it to you, but is the motherfucker going to catch the ball? Is the motherfucker going to catch the ball? You know what I'm saying? So what I'm saying is, Kohome has a lot of uh, pieces. We seeing them. And I'm thinking like, oh my God, you got it. You finally got what you needed. Now, hopefully you worked on your communications uh, abilities to get it moving faster. And not to be hiding behind a whole bunch of rocks and shit. You couldn't even see these niggas coming. You were too far back, bro. By the way. But... Go home man smart. He's going to be a problem in the future. And I think most likely Ohan is going to be the one that goes up against him. Because we haven't seen Ohan yet. And Ohan is the one that's going to take our way in the, um, in the historical records. So I'm expecting Ohan versus Go home man. Yeah. But that's it, man. That's what I feel about net number six, man. Um, number... I, a lot of people ain't gonna agree with me on this because you are sexist. <laughs> Number five is your tongue one. Your tongue one. Some people probably say, nah, she ain't no strategist, dog. Yes, she is a strategist, bro. When she was fighting on uh, Ryu Yu and all, um, the wolf people and Rozo and his clan. And she used that strategy of, you know, luring them out, making them think that uh, her army is running away. And you can't just, you know, run off like that. She had to make it seem as if, damn, she had to lose a bunch of people and then run off. And then leave another team to hopefully take that castle. Lost a lot of people there. And... As we hear from other people in the mountain people's groups, as uh, ooh, the on was it? I forgot their name, but they're the climbing tree. They're the climbing um clan. They could climb real good, and he was the leader of it. And he said that th that was the same way that uh Yatama took their place. So she does that strategy a lot, where she makes people think that she's on the losing end and beats them and that is a great winning strategy i don't care what you do 
Um, most other people who are fighting you, if they're not a strategist themselves and they don't read on to that and they chase you down and try to annihilate your army and then they end up, with, you know, taking your, your people, you know, taking your main base. And that's, uh, and I know that won't work on everybody, but guess what? It sure did work on Kocho. I'm, I'm thinking your tone went talk to Kenny and told him, like, hey, you know this, you can use this on that dude. How you know that? He's been in them city walls too long. <laughs> That's how I feel. Like, Coach, you been in them city walls too long. He ain't been outside in a long time. You know what I'm saying? So, damn that airplane loud. I stay right near, near, near Love Field. What the fuck? Is this plane about to land? That's a loud ass plane, bro. Why is that loud? It's like the plane only flying over my crib, bro. <laughs> but your tone, yeah. And if you hear about the other stories about how your tongue will add all those tribemen, like the Schumann tribe. The, that's the only one I can remember right now. The Schumann tribe was the one that could ride horses really fast. And then you had the, the, the ones who were real big. I forgot their name. It was just big. They were willing to die. I'm thinking like, what? How many men did she lose to get those niggas? And so when I see the different tribe men, also, the tribes that have those, oh, I'm forgetting their names too. The tribe men who have the unicorn, the unicorn helmets, and they have the Scythian like swords, like a snake shape. Those guys are not no pushover, bro. I'm thinking like, you have to use more than brute strength to beat some of those clansmen. They're so different. They're so tactical in their ways. And I'm thinking like, for, for her to unite each one of those uh, clan, each one of those tribes who has different strategical um, attributes, right? They, they're good at one thing, right? For her to conquer them, you have to be very, very good at strategy. You know what I'm saying? You have to be very good at strategy. Think about it. Roboku can't do that. Roboku can't get... I know some people will be like, but he got he got Shun Juju. Man, Shun Juju is one dude that probably betrayed his clan. Because if he, if he didn't betray his clan, his clan would be with him. Roboku didn't fuck with the mountain people. They didn't fuck with him. Because they don't respect his shit. They don't respect him. They don't respect how he do his shit, bro. He the type of nigga that hide behind walls and never fight nobody. And the whole time you you're outside the wall, he got an army pulling up on you. You know what I'm saying? You like fresh army. You like that's not fair, bro. You just call the whole another army. I don't respect that shit. People respect your tone, and she's willing to sacrifice to get what's done. Roboku not willing to sacrifice. That's why he uses poison. He not willing to sacrifice nothing. But that's why he not on this top seven list. But hey, you know what Roboku gonna have to sacrifice? His own life. All right, let's get to number four. Some people ain't, definitely ain't gonna like this because you're sexist. <laughs> Ka Rin. Ka Rin. She is a general of Chu. She's probably um, the number one general in, um, in Chu right now. Except that there's another dude, the, the, uh, the tiger of Chu, that dude we never seen, right? He's an older general, but we never seen his face. That guy is not going to come into the picture until... Kyren and Rempa are off the throw. I, I guarantee you. I'm telling you. Something going to happen with Kyren. She's going to die. But um, that's my prediction. 
But Kyran, never seen her fight. But I guarantee you, if she if she did fight, she'd probably call as fuck. But she is a strategical genius, people. I don't like her. I think she has a smug attitude and she's disrespectful than a motherfucker. But what I have to respect is that she is a strategical genius and she's not the type of person that's going to die on the battlefield trying to fight fight a duel with you. You know, like Kanye. Kind of Kanye, kind of bro. <laughs> You're a fool. But when she when, she, when I seen her in the coalition war and I seen her like her strategies of how she made all that dust go up and she made up this she made this she made everybody focus on her when I while another army snuck right behind them to go take the backside of Kankoku Pass. I was like, bro, she could have won that. But but guess what? Big Daddy Ozen and that's why you got to have niggas like Ozen, man. Some people, you have to have old people like Ozen to just go out there and do his own thing and protect himself. <laughs> he's a, he's a dude. He's just, he knows how to read the field real good. What made him think to go back there? You know what made him think to go back there? Because he was so confident that that boy from Yon, the general from Yon, would not make a move. And that's what I, when I mean, Ozen, a great strategist, must have great confidence. Because if you don't have confidence, you're going to freeze up, and the enemy is going to be on top of you, and they're going to kill you. Most strategists die in their first battle. Straight up. And that's from Kingdom, nigga, so don't think I made it up. But uh Kyran is a uh, and think about it. When um when everything went down and true and the king the, 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 their king died and what's that dude with the red hair that teamed up with um Roboku in the war? He got killed because they had planned to because the, the king couldn't have kids, and so they were trying to have uh, his wife have... Wait, man, what they did? They they, 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 they made a... They agreed to basically fake the king's child, right? That's not his child. That's somebody else's child. <clears throat> and so when old boy with the red hair decided not to go with the plan no more, then her old... The mother of the child... Older brother killed old boy in the red hair, took over, uh, took over Chu, and got Kyren and Rimpa to work with them, right? And for her to get put in that position mean, meant that she had a lot of soldiers. She must have had a lot of people behind her, more than the Chu, more than the Tiger of Chu. That's what I'm saying. She had more support in her country than that dude, which is crazy to me because I would expect people to be a little sexist back then. But like I said, Carmen is a made up character. Uh, most of the women in this show is made up characters are either they were men and her was like, we need to make some women in here. We can't be looking sexist. <laughs> I get it, bro. You need some eye candy. And every every um manga where it's mostly men, you need some eye candy. And you can say that's sexist, but goddamn it, that sells books. But let's get into it, man. Let's not keep it, uh, you know, prolonging the uh, whole thing. Number three, a real general of Zao. One of the realists. The only one I respect. The only one I respect, bro. Y'all know it is. Rimpa! My boy Rimpa, bro. The king of the glaives. Old as dirt, but still swinging like he got dynamite on his arms. Right? Rimpa. I only had to see this dude fight. Ozen. 
and um, Mogu and see how he did him. And I was like, damn. <laughs> he put Ozen, the great Ozen, in a trap. Even though he wasn't able to do the final blow because Ozen is Big Daddy O, right? And if I think Ozen and Rempa really went head up with each other, I think Ozen would beat Rempa. Um, because, I mean, Ozen and Rempa really have the same strategy. They both are different. They tried to make Rempa like an offensive player, but in real history, he was more of, like, Roboku, a defensive person. Um, but, uh, I get it. He's in somebody else's country, and he's going on the offense. So he can be very offensive, so don't get me wrong about that. But, um, Rempa is a force to be reckoned with. He's, he's like Oki. And I know some people are like, why you didn't put Oki on here? <sighs> you don't even know if I put Oki on there yet. <laughs> Oki's not going to be on here, bro. I don't think he's that smart of a strategist. That's just what it is. It is what it is. I think when... The way he allowed Roboku to do what he did to him in the very beginning at the bio campaign, it was like, it was like, I knew it was a trap. You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking like, okay, are you still going to allow Mobu to chase? Like, you know it's a trap. Stop going forward. And that's when I realized, okay, hey, okay, doggy, <laughs> might be a little too old. <laughs> You might be going to see now. But, um, Rempa, my thing about him is he's able to see the holes in your defense immediately. Remember that Remember that whole little thing Mogu had prepared for him? Rempa seeing that shit instantly and just start running through it. Just running through it. Just, I was like, you think Oki can do some shit like that? I don't think so. Yeah. I think Oki is very... He has martial might when he's able to turn his his soldiers into monsters. But I don't think he's like this strategical genius. Nah. I, I just don't think he's that strategical minded. <clears throat> Even though you can say, well, he helped Shen and them do all that. Nah. No. No. Everybody I mentioned on this, um, that mentioned on this list. Is a better strategical mind than Oki. For real. Your tunnel, go home, man. Uh, Molten, Karen, Mempa. It's not to say that Oki isn't that good. It's just, these are the cream of the crop that I pick. You might hate them, you may not like them. And you might say, but what about Roboku? And how many times I gotta tell you, Poison is not a strategy. It's a weakness. <clears throat> and it's the reason why Roboku has bad luck. Not one of these people in this motherfucking list ever used poison. And Kanki's not on this list, y'all. So you can't use that. You can't use Kanki. That's all y'all can grab for is Kanki. <laughs> but Rimpo, it's self explanatory. Rimpo, to me, is great at all things. Strategical genius. Uh, mighty warrior. And he has great instincts. But. Oki is lacking it. So if you want to try to compare Oki and Rempo. I think Oki is lacking in a strategical sense. But not as if he's not a good. Not as if he's, he's not. He's not good at strategy. He's just not better than these people. Alright Oki fans. <laughs> Alright number two man. Show Hegan. Show Hegan, man. Had his own school. He was training strat strategists for all this time. He trained Karyo Ten, Moki, Mo Ten, some other people that I, I can't remember. And then he became the head of military affairs of the whole country of Quinn. And you probably say, what has Shohiken really done? And I'm, I'm going to tell y'all, y'all. Shohiken and Mogul grew up during um, 
Sai's father and his grandfather's uh, term. And during those terms, understand, I think Sai's grandfather was only a king for a year and then he died. And I'm, I'm saying that because King Show lived for so long and he wouldn't die. <laughs> he wouldn't give up the throne. And then Sai's father was like, he was only there for a couple of years. And then he died. And during that whole time, if you think about it, it was a power vacuum where it was power to be grabbed. And during Sai's father's reign, you had real few going out doing campaigns. Remember, when um when Sai and Sekio were having their little civil war, Ryu Fu was on the front lines. Bishoike, Mogu, and the Four Pillars. They pulled up together. So they were, I wouldn't say there were big wars during that their time when they were in, like, they were young, when they were 15, 16, 17. I wouldn't say that. They probably were going through little skirmishes. That's why a lot of people didn't know of Mobu's name or Shohiki's name. Because if they would have fought in this war at the time, they, they, everybody would know their name. Everybody, they, their name would be known. They would have just as much achievements as Shin and Ohan, but the opportunities were um, less back then, right? Everybody was, everybody was coming off of the battles, of Battle of Changping, and the battle. And if you don't know that battle, I'll do a video on it. That was the, the that was the um, whole purpose of the dragons of the fire dragons of Wei, the heavenly generals, you know, whatever they, the three Zhao greats, and um, the six, you know, the seven greats in kingdom. All those three predecessors. Three groups of predecessors, they fought a major war that caused uh, a lot of their countries not to have, you know, a lot of people in their military. They had to regrow it. So Shohikin didn't have time to prove himself as much as these younger guys like Mo Chin Shen and Carrier Ten. But they're still geniuses. Shohikin is a genius. Even though he's a future tra traitor. Still a genius. I've seen it. He comes up with all these. He's the one that's coming up with the plans, people. <laughs> but you know who's executing those plans? Number one. It can only be one. Big Daddy Ozen. Ozen. Do I have to explain why Ozen is the number one general? No, I don't. I'm, and I'm not going to. I'm about to end this video. And so everybody who don't like Ozen and mad at me for picking number one, you don't understand why Ozen is number one. Just go look at Shukai Plains and see your boy Roboku get done up. <laughs> he done up. He done up. Rampa. Rampa couldn't get him. He wasn't able to beat him. He done up that dude from Yard. He stopped Karin's plan. You know what I'm saying? He can't fuck with, Go I mean, Gohome can't fuck with him. Even though it, in a few more years, I think Gohome is going to start fucking with him. Because just like Oza, remember I said, a strategist is only as good as his key players, the, the pieces on his board. Oza has a, a couple of pieces. You know what I'm saying? He know he knows how to gather those. That's why he won a QE. One of the top tens of bows. One of the four four kings of Rimba. Heavenly Kings of Rimba. He wanted that guy. Because he knew. You're gonna make me better if you get him. If you join me, you're gonna make me better. You know what I'm saying? And Gohome is gonna be a little Ozen in the future. But he's not there yet. But yeah, man. Ozen then did up some of the best generals in this whole series. Outsmarted them. And so that's why he's number one, people. But this video long enough. So we're going to wrap it up. It's your boy Kenji. Subscribe, comment, like, share. Do all the other. I'm out.